everybody, what's going on and welcome to GNR Central and today I want to talk about the influence that Axl Rose's ex-girlfriend Stephanie Seymour had on the writing and recording of Chinese Democracy. Now the couple broke up in February of 1993 and fans would really wouldn't have to wait long until Axl took his first parting shot at Stephanie Seymour on the band's 1993 album The Spaghetti Incident. So included as a hidden track on the album was the cover of a Charles Manson song called Look At Your Game Girl. So the song immediately followed their cover of the Fear song I Don't Care About You and it wasn't listed on the actual track list for the album. Now it's said that the cover of the Charles Manson song was handpicked by Axel and it was specifically chosen because it was a message that he wanted to convey to Stephanie Seymour and following the release of the Spaghetti Instant the band was surrounded by controversy once again because, of course, there was rumors that Charles Manson was going to get royalties from the song. So Axel had to put out his own statement defending the uh, decision of the band to actually record the cover of the song. So Axel put out a statement in December of 1993, a couple weeks after the album was released, and defended the band's decision to include it on the record. He said the song, he said, personally, I like the lyrics of the melody of the song. Hearing it shocked me, and I thought there might be other people out there who would like to hear it, Rose said. The song talks about how the girl is insane and playing a mad game, he said. I felt it was ironic that such a song that was recorded by Charles Manson, someone who should know the inner intricacies of madness. The same year, it was revealed that Axel had already recorded a new song that would, of course, end up on Chinese Democracy called This I Love. So Axel gave an interview to Hit Parader magazine in 1993. He said, I wrote and recorded a new love song that I want on the next record called This I Love. That's the heaviest thing that I've ever done. There was an interview also done with one of the guys who worked on Chinese Democracy in 2005 named Dave Dominguez. He said, This I Love is actually an old GNR song that the original GNR wrote and recorded for the Illusion Records. I like that song a lot. It took a couple weeks to find all the tapes because they finished uh, recording Use Your Illusions on the road and one tape was in Paris, another was in London, and another in Sydney, I believe. And in 2010, Axel revealed at a concert in Paris that This I Love was the only GNR song written in France. So Guns N' Roses back in the day only played France twice. They played it in 1992, which is the pay-per-view show that you're probably all familiar with. And at that time, he was going through an ugly period in his relationship with Stephanie Seymour. If you guys remember, he calls out Warren Beatty during that show because there was rumors that Warren Beatty and Stephanie Seymour were uh, were basically together and there were an item and she, basically she was cheating on Axel with Warren Beatty, who she'd previously dated. And that's why Axel called him out. And then the following year, Guns N' Roses played Paris once again, but by this time, Axel and Stephanie Seymour were split up. And even in 1995, Slash sort of hinted the kinds of songs that Axel may have had on his mind around that time. He gave an interview to Canadian Radio in April of 95 where he said, uh, Axel then decided to do his solo project with Guns, which I was like, after all doing all those videos and this and that and the other, I was like, no, I don't want to get involved in any kind of Stephanie Seymour ballads or any of that shit. So Rolling Stone magazine uh, wrote a pretty interesting article about Axel back in 2000 about what they called his lost years or to some fans the wilderness years so they talked a bit about the lawsuits with stephanie seymour and aaron everly so they said after he and seymour broke up in 1992 the model began dating peter brandt axel according to one friend uh, basically ordered subordinates to obtain a photo of brian's wife sandra and axel intended to take it to his psychic yoda for specific purposes according to a former geffen employee Axel wanted to cast a spell around Sandra to protect her from Peter because he felt she had to be, she'd been cuckolded as he had been and he had plenty of great deals of sympathy for her. Seymour, who was then 26 and Brandt, 45, married in Paris in 1995. Even by loose New Age standards, Axel had received some bizarre advice over the years. After Axel's ex-wife Erin Everly, the daughter of singer Don Everly, and the inspiration for the GNR hit Sweet Child of Mine sued Axel in 1994, charging assault and sexual battery. Everly sat for a deposition and she testified that Axel believed that she and Stephanie Seymour were sisters in a past life and were trying to kill him. As far as her own relationships with Axel went, Everly said, Axel told me that in a past life we were Indians and that I had killed our children and that's why he was so mean to me in this life. So one of the lawsuits that Axel was involved in back in 1995 involved his ex-girlfriend or fiance Stephanie Seymour. And some of the details that came out of the lawsuit seemed to find their way into a future Guns N' Roses song. So not only was Axel involved in the lawsuit with Stephanie Seymour, he was also involved in a lawsuit with his ex-wife Erin Everly. So 
Seymour had alleged that Axel had beaten her, and Axel alleged that it was she who had attacked him. And according to Seymour's version of the events, after an argument in their kitchen, Axel shattered some bottles on the floor, grabbed Seymour by the throat, put her head in a headlock, and then dragged her barefoot through broken glass while repeatedly hitting her in the head and upper body and kicking her in the abdomen. Axel's story was that Seymour grabbed his balls and he was just defending himself. So the argument ensued following a Christmas party that Axel apparently didn't want to have and that Stephanie wanted to have, and apparently there was drugs at the party, and Axel wasn't very happy about that. Now, eventually, both lawsuits would be settled amicably out of court. It's thought that Axel paid around $400,000 to Stephanie Seymour to settle it out of court. Later on in the article, they talked about some tragic events that happened in Axel's life, like his uh, mother passing away of cancer in 1996, also dealing with the wildfires the same years, and also during the years that Axel was working on Chinese democracy, uh, whenever Stephanie Seymour's birthday came around, Axel seemed to shut down for weeks, and a lot of the record is about Stephanie. She was his perfect woman, at least his image of what she should be. Fast forward now to the year 2000, Axel still working on Chinese democracy, and he finally gives an interview to Rolling Stone after really not talking to the media for about six years. So according to the interviewer, he said, Having stayed publicly silent so long, Rose appears to view the album, referring to Chinese democracy, as the final offering up of his side of a myriad of battles, notably with his estranged bandmates and even more painful with his one-time fiancée, supermodel Stephanie Seymour, with whom he had an ugly split. He speaks of his desire for Seymour's son, Dylan, to someday be able to come across the new record. Axel said, I hope you'll hear it when he grows up. If he ever wants to know the story, to hear the truth, Rose says a little quietly. And it also goes on to say, rather than simply create a work that's negative and vengeful, though, Rose seems anxious to make something positive. Along these lines, he recently decided to remove the two most controversial GNR tracks, One in a Million from 1989's GNR Lies, uh, with its lyrics, with its disparaging lyrics, and the cover of the Charles Mathis song, Look at Your Game Girl, which ends the 1993 uh, Spaghetti Incident. While he's always been reluctant to explain or justify his art, Rose has come to believe that they're just too easily misinterpreted. Starting in February, the tracks will be deleted from future pressings. Following the release of Chinese Democracy, Axel gave an interview in 2012 where he made some startling revelations about his former bandmates and Stephanie Seymour. So in the interview, he talked about how his relationship with Stephanie Seymour and Duff and Slash hindered his ability to write songs for Chinese Democracy. He said the trio did more damage to my ability as a writer, and to those three, it was all crap. It beat me down so much. At the time of the Use Your Illusion tours, Slash and Duff said, you're an idiot and you're a loser. I didn't write for years, and I felt I was hindered for a very long time. I was also trying to figure out what I wanted to say. When it's right to be venting and when you're digging a bigger hole, lyrics on Chinese took a long time, Axel said. So let's talk about some of the songs on Chinese Democracy and which ones I think are written about Stephanie Seymour. I think the most obvious one is This I Love. So the song, as I said before, was written after their breakup. And it's probably hence about her. When you've read some of these Rolling Stone pieces, you can see that he's still thinking about her and he's having trouble letting go. And the song really talks about not letting their love die because he still believes that she loves him and holds a special light for him. It's also believed that Chinese democracy is a way for Axel to communicate with Dylan, her son, just like he said in the Rolling Stone article back in 2000. The other song that I think is very obviously about Stephanie Seymour, and I think it's probably the best song off of Chinese Democracy, is There Was a Time. And I think specifically when you've read some of the Rolling Stone pieces, the lawsuit, it's pretty apparent that some of the lyrics refer to their relationship. I think the most uh, one, of, one of the most um, telling lyrics is the lyric, Cocaine in the Hall, all the way from California. So if you guys have read the lawsuit and the People Magazine article, uh, one of the things that kind of cemented the end of their relationship was a cocaine party that Stephanie threw at their house while Axel was away. He basically came back to the house and went crazy, and they got into a huge fight. And he was especially pissed because Stephanie's son was upstairs. And basically, that's w where one of the charges from the lawsuit stemmed from. And then, you know, broken glass and cigarettes resulting from them splitting up. And I think that lyric alone tells you everything you need to know about the song being about Stephanie. The other line that's pretty telling is following the line cocaine in the hall all the way from California on the way to ne your next call. Your next call being because she's a supermodel and they have calls to go to whatever next photo shoot they have to do or whatever magazine or whatever um, their next call, whether it's in Los Angeles or to another city. 
So that does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and be sure to subscribe if you love GNR as much as I do. And go check us out on GNRcentral.com. And if you guys just love rock and roll in general and you want to see more cool true stories that are maybe not GNR related, but like about other bands, go check out my other channel, GNR Central 2. The link is down below. Take care and have a good one. Hey, this is Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses, and you're watching GNR Central. Yeah!